This past February, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fought in Las Vegas for boxing's biggest prize, the heavyweight title. The ring walk was the most bizarre spectacle I've ever seen. And there was our guest today, Jimmy Lennon Jr., right where he was in Estadio Azteca when Julio Cesar Chavez fought in front of 135,000 people, where he was for the Buster Douglas upset over Mike Tyson in Tokyo, where he was five years ago when Mayweather and Pacquiao finally squared off. He was in the center of the ring. I'm a Venice, California-born, Los Angeles-based sports fan. One that has played, coached, announced, and promoted sports my whole life. My love affair with sports started in my own backyard and has led me to this podcast. Thanks to the support of the Amateur Athletic Union in East Bay, I'm excited to bring you Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. Hello, sports historians. Welcome to the official podcast of the quarantine era. Okay, well, maybe we don't want that tagline, but we do wish everyone the best and encourage you and your families to stay safe. Welcome to Audio Video Podcast 31 of Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. My guest today, Hall of Fame ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr., is in for the final installment of what has been a great four-part series. First, let me introduce the producer of today's show, the director of the FBL 5 slate of shows and also the director of the 90th AAU Sullivan Award presentation this past week. She's the 1989 St. Mark School Athlete of the Year, my quarantine partner for life, my wife, Christine Jimbo. Hello again, everybody. I'm here for the same thing to remind you of those three things that'll help you get to us anywhere. The first being Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. That's Denny like the restaurant, Lennon like the beetle. Sports Stories Podcast.com and Sports Stories DL to get to Sports Stories on Twitter. So you got those three things to remember. Once again, Sports Stories Podcast.com, Sports Stories with Denny Lennon, and Sports Stories mm-hmm. DL. That's right. Uh, at Sports Stories DL is my Twitter handle, and I really need your help. It's sad how few Twitter followers I have, and I'm putting up good stuff. Please follow me so I can look better in front of my Twitter friends. Okay. As far as this podcast, you know, we're not only the top video podcast in the Sentinel Adobe Corridor, but now we're also the official podcast of the AAU Sullivan Award presentation. And what an honor that was for us to host it on our Facebook Live show. In regards to that, as part of promoting for the AAU Sullivan Award, I was interviewed by Kelly Cordes on WJON 1240 AM radio in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And I was able to get in this promo for this video podcast. You're listening to It Matters with Kelly Cordes on AM 1240 WJON. And uh, that is some award ceremonies are happening. And uh, Denny Lennon is joining me. Uh, Denny was a former high school coach and athletic director. He's also still a national director of AAU Beach, which uh, SoCal sends courts every summer. And he's joining me for uh, a talk about the 90th annual AAU James E. Sullivan Award Ceremony. It's going to be airing in a 60-minute program on Sports Stories with Denny Lennon on uh, Wednesday. And I'm glad that you're joining me here today, Danny. Thanks for being here. Have you been able to to attend this in years past? Have you been part of it in the in the past, or is this new for you? I have. I've been there for the last, um, I think, six years. Uh, I was there five years ago, perhaps, when uh, Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys was the winner out of Ohio State, and I've been there since since that time in attendance. Uh, and also, I'm part of the committee that helps, um, you know, move the event forward. I love it. I think it's great. It sounds like uh, something that you were really, really passionate about. You you have a daily video podcast, correct? Yeah. So uh, four days a week, we put out a Facebook live show. And then uh, one day a week, we, we put out our, our video podcast, which uh, I argue is the uh, number one podcast in the Sentinel Adobe corridor. Uh, I made mean, that's that's just uh, the Sentinel Adobe's on my street, Kelly. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure nobody else is doing a video podcast. So I like to claim that title. Uh, good but for yeah, you. <laughs> we, we do. We put out a pretty good video podcast that uh, is available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and iHeart. you got to love getting in a little cross promo. 
All right, well, in this part four of four with Jimmy Lennon Jr., we finish up the epic interview sit-down with tales of Tyson, Mayweather, Fury, Wilder, and more. More as in the likes of Felix Trinidad, Alexis Arguello, the MMA, and EA Sports. Hey, I think it's time to get to the main event. And now, it's showtime! To our Sports Stories fans around the world, we welcome you to the 7428 Studio in Westchester, California for round four with the International Hall of Fame ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Please note, this interview was recorded on January 28th, 2020. It's interesting that um, both of those, the Douglas fight, and then obviously Tupac and like those have entered into the mm. cultural zeitgeist or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you were there at both of those because when I recently listened to a podcast about Biggie and Tupac's, and, and they just drew the whole line between it, they dropped in your audio introducing Mike Tyson. Yeah, uh, it was, yeah, was kind of yeah. you know, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> like I was like, geez, almighty. Um, the next one, only a year later, Tyson Evander Holyfield, which would have been the is First that, or the second? Well, which one that went from the sound and the fury to the bite fight? Is that two? Um, I can't remember the exact names, but of course the bite fight would have been their their rematch. Their rematch. Uh, the first one, I remember distinctly people from Showtime being very concerned about the health of Evander Holyfield. He had a heart condition previously. Mm -hmm. He looked very mediocre against fighting Bobby Chez, and they just felt they were so down on this fight. They thought, oh, this is just going to be terrible, and it ended up being... Such a great fight in Evander. It was a great fight. You know, beating him, mm -hmm. out bullying him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the rematch, the uh, the bite fight. Um, <laughs> you know what? It's I, crazy. I, 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 yeah. Uh, you ever, have you ever seen anything like that? No, no, never. Not even in the lower level clubs? No, amateur no. Stuff? To bite so hard that, that to, to bite a piece of his ear off and to do it God. twice. And there was a bit of a mystery twice. because we're sitting at ringside. At this time, they don't have the screens above for people to see replays and so forth. Sure. So we're sitting there and I see um, Holyfield leap up into the air and it's like, what? I've never seen that. Somebody so something, something happened. And then he, there's a bit of a mystery because he, they, they call the referee over who examines and sees something. But we really don't know. So that's interesting because you don't necessarily have monitors. So those of us at home saw a much better view and are like, why aren't you stopping the fight? Like, yes. So, so he, but he doesn't have, he didn't see it. So is it who? who he, do you Mills, Lane, who? Mills Lane Mills was Lane was the referee and he took two points away. So okay. It's a pretty, pretty big foul for biting for biting yeah and then next round proceeds and he bit him again and holyfield doesn't jump as high but he kind of you know you could see he responds and it was at the end of the round holyfield's trainer walks over taps mills lane on the back and says come look and then they go ahead and stop the fight. And then a kind of a riot in the ring ensues. And then we're there for I don't know how long, but the whole audience has no clue why the fight was stopped. And I'm waiting like 10, because they had Jim Gray interviewing the two fighters. They were replay and all this stuff. But the whole crowd and the media is just banging on the ring saying, what happened, Jimmy? Tell us what happened. So it was a, a, kind what, of what a wild kind of, night. What's getting relayed to you? You're just are you? Oh, I found you're, out you're, at you're that leaning point. in, listening to Mills Lane talk to the. No, no. Uh, I went to Mills Lane and asked him okay. personally, and and Mark Ratner was the uh, the the, the um, executive director, and so yep, yeah, bit him wow. in the ear twice, and so I found out, and I'm waiting to announce it. it took forever, so it's it a pretty wild night. Real in, wild. Uh, being there live, yeah. My goodness, another one. Um, th was it the first or the second Tyson Holyfield that the parachute is? When no, no, that was Razor Ruddock oh, and, that was and Razor Holyfield. Ruddock. That was a different fight. Razor Ruddock. So, yeah, the, the Wait, fan Were you man, there for that? Man. I was not there for that. No, oh, okay. No. okay. Well, that's got to be. Because yeah. that, that was pretty well. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> wow. So, um, 2015, mm. I remember, I think we we're celebrating my wife Christine's um, birthday. And we're in Hermosa or something like that. But we made it a point, and we all go to watch uh, Mayweather Pacquiao. Mm. Now, this had been coming because they should have fought oh, yeah. years previous. Mm -hmm. And it had just been coming for a while. And I knew you were um, announcing, but 
did Mayweather, I mean, who had to have Michael Buffer and he had to, right, how did right. that get negotiated? Like yeah. two, two announcers. Well, I, I, um, I don't think it was that personal mm. that Michael and Buffer and I did it because it was a shared broadcast between HBO and Showtime. Okay. So I was the Showtime guy. He was the HBO guy. And then they had the announced crew, the broadcasters, some from each, from some from Showtime. I think Jim Lampley and... Mm. And Al Bernstein, you know, so right? they so, shared, okay. they shared that. So I know it wasn't as personal, um, but it wasn't the first time we did, Michael Buffler and I did it together. We, we had done it, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson, the same HBO show time. Oh, okay. And then we did it years before Michael Carbajal and Chiquita Gonzalez. And so, so, okay. So there's so, precedent for that. Yeah. And that was, um, I, the hype around that fight mm. really transcended like across it was huge, and in fact, they delayed the main event. And uh, I'm talking to the guys from Showtime, and they're like giddy. They're saying, "We have to delay because we have so many buys that are still coming in. We've <laughs> got to wait." And it was like, "Really? Wow! <laughs> you know, go. this is great. Let's so, go! Wow, so. that's pretty cool." Um, yeah, like I, I, I kind of felt like that fight was a couple of years late. Sure. You know. Sure. Um, but it just took everybody to get there. Um, is there any other fights that stick out in your mind? Can, can I mention sure. something about that fight? I want to talk mm -hmm. about Floyd Mayweather just for a mm -hmm. second. Super sharp, observant, bright guy. So we're in the fighter t t talent meetings where the fighters come in and talk to the the the, um, the talent, and they mm -hmm. ask them some questions. How's training going? What do you got? What's your strategy? What do you think about what your opponent said, mm -hmm. and so forth? So Manny Pacquiao comes in, and there's a room now. This is so big. There's camera crews, and there's you know a lot of people want to see things, and I'm there too. And Pacquiao comes in, and he gives his interview. You know, wonderful interview. I don't know if there are 35 people in the room or so forth. He and his team leaves. And then a little bit later, Floyd comes in, and he's and he sits down, and he looks around the room, and he goes, "Who are you?" <laughs> to you? No. Oh, to some guy. Okay. He says, "Who are you?" And he says, "What are you crazy?" And then people start to look at this guy, and it's the one guy in the room that does not have a credential to be there that he wow. didn't recognize. Mayweather. Now you, you know, to, to the presence of mind to be able to do that, they kicked him out, you know. Mayweather. But wow. for him to just do that, it just take control of the room and know what's going on. I've never seen anything like that. That's something. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that shows you. Yeah, that guy was yeah. in charge of things, wasn't he? He sure was. He was sharp. He sure was. He's been so nice to me. He's so complimentary every single time we meet. He mm. says, "You know, only the best. You're the very best." And he a good relationship with. Does him. that make you uncomfortable at all when people um, compliment you and go, "Oh, you're the best," and you know that kind of thing? I think you know. Well, I take it in stride. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not make me uncomfortable. I think people are showing their appreciation, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that, and that you know makes me feel good. You know, but I. You know, I feel like I have the best job in the world. You know, I really do. <laughs> I travel. I, yeah. People are nice to me. I, you know, uh, sit down and watch the great fights take place. Um, any other fights but besides the ones I mentioned that kind of stick out either for odd reasons or the spectacle or anything? Uh, I think we mentioned, you know, many of them. But, you know... Anything can happen in this this sport. Anything and everything <laughs> yes. does happen. That's why it's, we all that's we, why we all jump right back in it. We like um, it. the heavyweight division now. So um, it seems to me, I, I, I'm not following. I mean, I remember being a kid and certainly knowing who held the belt and everything. Mm. And then when the belt started to divide, it got a little tricky. Um, but now there's like Tyson Fury seems to have something going for him. Wilder, mm -hmm. um, Anthony or, Joshua is, is Anthony also Joshua. champion. Um, I think the heavyweight division is doing very well right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit tainted by some of the history of the different champions and champions mm -hmm. that weren't so strong and the different belts and so forth. It's kind of coming together, which is nice. I guess the one controversy would be Tyson Fury. He's, he's considered the lineal heavyweight champion or the ring champion. And that has mm. to do with the, pres the, the people going back to John L. Sullivan and who beat him and beat him. So he's the man who beat the man who beat the man it, going back. Is that... Shannon Briggs was he a lineal yeah, champion? Yeah, yeah, he well? was. Yeah. I recently met him. Oh, okay. He came by here. He's a friend of my sister-in-law's. Super nice guy. And he was such. He's such a character. Yeah, yeah. Let's he get, really let's, is. The whole let's go, let's champ. go, champ. Oh, yeah, yeah, love yeah. It. Love yeah. It. But it it goes back to that, and there have been a couple of breaks where you have to 
Jew, you know, the, someone didn't defend their title. I see. And so you have so to decide who's the chair. best mm. out there. And it goes back to the, one of the Klitschko's. And then Tyson Fury beat Klitschko. Um, and that's how, how he holds that. De, uh, Deontay Wilder's a terrific puncher. Mm. Maybe the hardest puncher in the history of the sport. Mm. Uh, wow, that's saying something. I mean, of his, you know, he's knocked out every opponent except for Tyson Fury. Knocked him out 40, 142 knockouts I can't even remember and one punch power like you can't believe so heavyweight dude, Anthony Joshua yeah. super guy are, great time are right they now. in a I thought I heard somebody say something about um, they're not worried about having an undefeated record as much as uh, being able to make it you know so that it's, it's unified it's like unified it's what people well I think that's the influence of MMA because in mm. MMA your in undefeated record doesn't mean as much you can mm. have five losses in your career and be the best there is and I think that's a good influence that fighters should fight each other, fight the tough fights, not try to protect a record. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's where we are with that. We interrupt this podcast to bring you a commercial from our sponsor, Casablanca. Casablanca Restaurant in Venice, California. Proud sponsor of Sports Stories with Denny Lennon. Also sponsoring the Facebook Live at Five Friday show. Margaritas. That's right. Carlos is kind enough at Casablanca to uh, package up like a to go what they're selling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to go. What uh, What is in it? It's like that taco it's a daily bar. daily deal. He does basically a taco bar with two different meats, beans, rice, uh, tortillas. It's fantastic. Brilliant. And then you throw in the margaritas with that. And if you watch our uh, Friday show, you'll see that we cheers one another. He sends one over to uh, Venice where Marley and the Rices are hosting part of the show over here to the 7428 studio. And where any we do local it. guests. And any local guests. Doug O'Neill. Benefit as well. Doug O'Neill, the uh, Triple Crown winner, horse trainer, is a new big fan. So, you know, thank you, Carlos. You can call Carlos. At 310-505-5091. Again, 310-505-5091. Call Carlos. Ask him for the Sports Stories with Denny Lennon special. He's going to throw in margaritas or a big percentage off. Vámonos a Casa Blanca. Vámonos a Casa Blanca. Vámonos a Casa Blanca. La comida para la familia. Vámonos a Casa Blanca. Vámonos a Casa Blanca. And now back to our interview with Jimmy Lennon Jr. You're um inductee of World Boxing and International Boxing Hall of Fame. Right. What's right. the difference between those two? World Boxing is no longer in existence. It mm. was L.A. based. It was a terrific organization, but it didn't last whether it's the funding or not international boxing organization based in canastota new york there's a, a hall of fame museum you can go there and mm. see casts of fists of the fighters and gloves uh, and wardrobes cool. photos films like it's a wonderful a, oh, like they have a parade oh, every summer great. every summer they they have that it's a it's a tremendous and that one is ongoing and, and quite respected and and so you were inducted into that hall of fame did you um give a speech somebody present sure. you all that stuff sure who presented you oh um, I don't. Remember. I think it was <laughs> my, I think it was my buddy Steve Farhood. Okay. Um, uh, but it, you know, it's a, it's, it's a whole long week where thousands of fans show up. They have parade. They have ceremonies, banquets. It takes oh, place, great. and it's a wonderful. If it's if you're a boxing fan, you can't miss it. It's amazing. You've been married how long now? Twenty plus years. Twenty, yeah, I'm plenty, twenty-five plus years. Wow. Yeah. And then two boys. Two boys. Um, either showing any inclination to carry on the, uh, so my older son is James the third mm. and no, he's a computer engineer. So that's the direction he's taken. I can't imagine doing that. Okay. My younger son is still in college and I think he's Alexander. I think he's, we'll see. Okay. A little young. He has other yeah. aspirations and I didn't start until I, of course, you know, that's fun. Had a path in life. Yeah. What, um, if you had to say, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you probably a couple questions where you, you know, whenever Coach Wooden was asked who um, was his best player, mm. he would always say, um, well, let me ask you who your best grandchild is. <laughs> it's a good You know, a good like he, he would say, it's tough to answer, isn't it? <laughs> but um, I'm going to ask him anyway. So, what, and you could premise it by being the most skilled, but who, who, who would stands out in your mind as the most skilled or the best fighter? 
or my favorite, if I could throw that in there too. And it's changed through the years. And, you know, that is definitely a, a hard question to ask. So, but I've had my favorites and... Alexis Arguello was one of them. He was mm. so skilled, so dedicated, and I just loved him as a gentleman. Mm-hmm. And, and I got to know him, and so that was it. And then I got to the period of, of Chavez, Julio Cesar Chavez. Mm. And then I went to the period of Felix Trinidad, who I just Trinidad, thought he yeah. was an amazing fighter to watch and enjoyed. And, you know, um, I put Floyd up there also because now a lot of people give, give him a hard time because he doesn't punch as hard and he's defensive minded. But I got to tell you, I would watch him fight these great, great fighters, future Hall of Famers, form, you know, world champions and toy with them. Mm. Just make them look silly. You, you don't do that unless you're fantastic. And so I was enthralled by the beauty mm-hmm. of his ability as he got to the heavier weights. He didn't carry the knockout power, mm-hmm. but. I just think he's an incredible, technically sound fighter. Most unpredictable fighter. Or uh, Mike Tyson, for sure. Because you didn't know which way. No. Uh, he, there was a fight in, in Scotland I did with Lou Savarese, and he was so amped up. And he hurt Lou Savarese, and the referee jumped inside to stop. And he was like... Throwing Getting punches around. over oh, the referee, geez. and and it was scary. Even I saw this corner run up because wow. they knew he was like out of control. And then there are times that he's docile and you know whatever, <laughs> or uh, you know. So he was, it was, it was. Uh, he was very unpredictable. Favorite promoter to work with? Okay, um, I'm gonna have to say the, the the greatest promoter in Japan that that ever was is uh, Mr. Honda Honda mm. Honda Promotions. Um, you know, I could have said Don King because he's done a, a lot for my career and, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, Dan Goosen locally here is a mm-hmm. great, great mm-hmm. promoter and many others, but Mr. Honda, the, the level of hospitality he provides <laughs> is just unbelievable. Like what? Well, I mean, from the fine, fine meals and, and, and dinners to every detail provided for, and he's the biggest promoter Japan has ever had, worked with Don King, Bob, all of them. He did the Tyson, you know, uh, fight with Buster Douglas, but the day that you're leaving into the car, he'll come to your hotel and make sure to wave goodbye, you know, shake your hand, thank you very much, and as your car is pulling away, he'll wave to you. I mean, yeah, he didn't have to do that. He has an amazing reputation. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love it, and I love Japan. So That's pretty cool. Um, Favorite city or country? Oh, you know, well, okay, so Las Vegas is great because everything's set up for sure. great fights. It's local professionals and everything, but I do I do like Tokyo very much. Mm. Um, the fans in England are amazing. The chanting, the singing are, um, is just terrific, but uh, Tokyo does stand out. It's most unusual. Your voice, you or your voice or current voice of EA Sports? Um, yeah, I was. It's been a, a, a while back that, that we did the uh, Knockout Kings, mm. and that was a great great opportunity love doing it did you do that in like in a studio and yeah. then um you just had to call out you, you were, are you just the introductions i didn't look i didn't look at it yeah yeah i flew to orlando to their studio oh, cool. and it was just two long days of announcing <laughs> the same name and a, you know winner by way of knockout or winner by you know unanimous it's, decision yeah oh my gosh it was a it was quite an effort that, that's such an interesting um situation though because you enter into the lives of so many people that might never go to a fight, might never have known who you were. And I get that sometimes. Oh, you were the voice of this yeah. and so forth. And I didn't realize it at the time, but obviously I know now how important in big gaming is. And, and I mean, a good for instance is like Madden. People generally yeah. don't know he was a coach. Yeah. They go, oh yeah, man. The, mm-hmm. You know, or your Madden, Madden rating is so important. And I'm like, yeah, he was a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> he was a very good coach. All right, um, we're coming down the stretch here. All right, got some rapid fire questions. Okay, <clears throat> your first pet, uh, dog, candy. Mm. First car, Plymouth Valiant, 1963. Rebuilt the engine myself. Wow. Favorite sports team as a kid, uh, Dodgers. Uh, your nickname as a kid, Lemonhead. <laughs> Did you have that too? I didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. I, didn't know that. I just always know you said Jamie. <laughs> Uh, favorite board game? Oh, probably uh, Monopoly. Uh, favorite uh, main dish? Right now? Mm-hmm. Maybe sushi. Okay. Uh, favorite dessert? Uh, toffee pudding. Oh, wow. That's a first on that one. That's <laughs> okay. good. Uh, favorite movie? Uh, Schindler's List. 
Favorite musical group? Um, the Beatles. Favorite author? Mm. Um, probably Steinbeck. Mm. Um, favorite professional athlete? Uh, boy, with Kobe just dying, how can you how can yeah. you deny that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where did you meet your wife? I was best man. She was maid of honor at a wedding wow. in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. What was your first date besides? My first date with my wife? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think that counts, does it? Uh, no, it does not count. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, I went to her place and we went to dinner. That was that was it. All right. She lived in California and, and so did I, but. The marriage was the wedding was in Oklahoma. Okay, um, what's your favorite word? Um, it is uh, phlegm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell phlegm? That was <laughs> solid. It's a ph, but you know. Um, and do you have a favorite quote? Oh, um, no. I'm I'm not gonna. I, mm. I don't go there. But it, it would have to do with po- being positive. If, mm-hmm. if I were to choose one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, where the note, um, the record of note for 80s, great 80s television, mm. if not the greatest of all time. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you three different of the great shows, and you get to pick one and then take the quiz. All right. So there's the uh, CBS 72 to 81 Emmy and Peabody winner, The Waltons. Okay. There is a groundbreaking drama from Bruce Paltrow, The White Shadow. Okay. Or... There's the multiple number one show of all time, perhaps, multiple award winner on CBS Magnum P.I., the one, of course, <clears throat> from the 80s. Man, you know, I was in college a lot in the 80s. Hmm. Which means you watched all of these. I did not watch too many of them. <laughs> but let's go with the Waltons. Okay, I like it. Yeah, it's good. A, I, I like it. All right, how Lower many, your expectations here. Uh, okay. How many uh, children did Seven you? children. <clears throat> you're off and running for bonus. <laughs> so you're still undefeated, but for bonus, can you name them? Not a chance. No? Okay. No, not a chance. Um, do you know what uh, Grandma and Grandpa's names uh, were? Oh, no, I don't. But I think they primarily went with Grandma and Grandpa, so... They did. That's it. Esther and Zeke, but... Okay. All right. Um, do you know whose parents they were, as a bonus question? No, not a chance. They're John's. They're, yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So, here's a, this is a tough one. John Boy is a journalist, and he got the... He won. He got to accompany these news reporters to witness an event, and mm-hmm. it was a disaster. Yeah. Do you know what he saw? It was the uh, world's largest volley- uh, <laughs> backyard volleyball tournament. It was not. No. <laughs> well, I, really? He should have came to cover that for yeah, the Blue Ridge yeah. Chronicle. They would have gone big. He saw the Hindenburg crash. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But I, you know what? I'm going to give you points just for picking the Waltons because it's the first time that's ever been picked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this was. Um, I'm really happy you came. Yeah, that's um, great. Not only because your family, um, and we're so proud of you, but I mean, you've lived this um, unbelievable life through mm. through the sport and getting to represent mm. and, and out there man. doing it. Yeah, it's oh, fantastic. Really am. And it's great for us. Thank you, Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Jamie. Great to be with you. Great to be with you. Now it's time for an installment of As Time Goes By, where we get to know Carlos Haro Jr. of Casablanca Restaurant in Venice one minute at a time. Now let's play it again. With Carlos Jr. Uh, what studio was the movie filmed at? Warner Bros. That's right. The movie was based on what unproduced play? Oh, that one I don't know. That was Everybody Comes to Rick's. It was like they bought it for $20,000. They kept took it off so it wouldn't be produced, and they could make it a movie. And the, did the Epstein's wrote, read the screenplay after that? I or think that, so. Uh, um, and it won it won the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay sure. as well. Oh, wow. I didn't even know. Yeah. Yep. Okay. What was the name of the central song of the movie that Rick and Isla fell in love to? As time goes by. Very good. In what city does Rick and Isla fall in love? Paris. He's killing. He's doing good. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is supported by the AAU. Find a local event and join at aausports.org. And remember, you can catch your favorite amateur sports live stream, replays, and highlights at ballertv.com. Sports Stories, along with East Bay, supports the Heroes Movement, a nonprofit that bridges the gap from mental or physical therapy to getting strong again through strength and conditioning workouts. This free service is available for any veteran of the United States Armed Forces. Visit heroesmovementusa.org for more information. 
Passports Stories, along with thousands of people across the country, also supports the My Stuff Bags Foundation, a nonprofit that provides traumatized children with new belongings and new hope. Learn more at mystuffbags.org. Sports Stories with Denny Lennon is a production of Sports Stories, Inc. and is available on Apple Podcasts and YouTube or wherever you listen and watch. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and give us a review. It really helps spread the word. You can find all our social media links, archives, and other info on our website at sportsstoriespodcast.com. Special thanks to the John R. Wooden Course and Wooden's Wisdom. Original music for Sports Stories is courtesy of Lennon Music Productions. Original images by Sienna Lennon Photography. Sports Stories is produced by Christine Jimbo and Marley Rice. Sports Stories is edited by Bob McCall. Additional staff include Ray Castro, Teresa Dolan, Jake Downey, Carlos Haro, and Buck Magic Lennon. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy about your podcast world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? Sports stories. In all the good times, I find myself longing for change. And in the bad times, I fear myself. I'm on the deep end watching sports stories. I entertain the crowd. Crash to the surface where they can't hurt us. I'm watching sports stories now. (laughs) See you next week. Check it out, book!